Saruman the White, the most powerful wizard in Arda. He was the chief of the Istari, the five wizards that were sent to Middle-earth to aid the free peoples against Sauron's devices. During the War of the Ring, Saruman sought the One Ring to become the ruler of Middle-earth. He abandoned his mission as the White Wizard, took Isengard as his fortress and prepared a great army to conquer the Kingdom of Rohan. Why did Saruman become a traitor? What did he do before the War of the Ring? What was Saruman's fate? This is the story about Saruman the White. Saruman was a part of the Maiar, spiritual and supernatural beings created before time itself. These beings dwelled in the Blessed Realm and acted under the Valar, the gods of Middle-earth. Saruman was at this time known as Kurumo and acted under Aula the Smith. Aula was responsible for creating continents, mountains, the dwarves, etc. Kurumo became a master in crafts and he later grew interested in ring lore. Kurumo stayed in the Blessed Realm until the 1000th year of the Third Age, when he was sent as an emissary to Middle-earth to inspire the opposers of Sauron. The Isari were forbidden to reveal their true power, but they were tasked to contest Sauron and to unite those that resisted him. They came in the shape of older men, were immortal and had many powers of mind and hand. After Saruman arrived in Middle-earth, he went into the East and his doings from this period are not known. We are not told anything about Saruman until the 2463rd year of the Third Age when he is appointed as the chief of the White Council. However, to Saruman's dismay, Gandalf was the desired candidate by Lady Galadriel. Gandalf turned down the offer and Saruman became the chief, but he never became less jealous of Gandalf. Saruman now started to study the lore of the Rings of Power. In the 2759th year of the Third Age, Saruman settled down in Isengard after being granted the keys by the Gondorian steward Beren. Isengard was of Numenoran origin and was a mighty fortress. It had been under Gondorian rule until the 2710th year of the Third Age, when Dunlendings had killed off the Gondorian guards still guarding this area. The Rohirrim later sieged out these dumb landings and it was retrieved in the hands of Gondor. There is no doubt that Stuart Beren thought Saruman had good intentions when giving him this fortress. That might also have been the case at this period of time, but not long did it take before Saruman came too entangled with the lore of the Rings of Power and he grew interested in acquiring the One Ring. 91 years later, Gandalf enters Dol Guldur and discovers that Sauron is its lord and that he is now collecting all the rings of power. One year later, the White Council gathers and Gandalf wants to attack Dol Guldur. Saruman refuses this because he hopes that the One Ring will reveal itself now that its master is back. This is the first true sign of Saruman's corruption. He is now working against the Council to leverage his interests. In the 2939th year of the Third Age, Saruman discovers that Sauron's scouts are searching in the Anduin River, seeking the One Ring. Realizing that Sauron now knows of Isildur's bane, Saruman is now eager to attack Dol Guldur to prevent Sauron from finding the One Ring. Two years later, the White Council meets and once again Gandalf suggests that they attack Dol Guldur prevent Sauron from growing. Saruman now agrees to this, and the White Council plans an attack on Dol Guldur. This occurs at the same time that Thorin Oakenshield is leading an expedition to retake Erebor. This was a part of Gandalf's plan to prevent Sauron and Smaug from allying, which could have proven disastrous. Gandalf himself mentions that it was due to Saruman's devices that the White Council managed to banish Sauron from Dol Guldur. However, it is not known how this battle occurred 
and it was most definitely not like how it was portrayed in the Hobbit movies. The Nazgul had already left and prepared Mordor for their master's return. Sauron had not been idle, and he was prepared for this attack. Sauron now fled Dol Guldor and returned to Mordor. Twelve years later, the White Council meets for the last time. Saruman now claims to have proof that the One Ring is washed into the sea, never to return. This is of course only a diversion to bewilder the council. Saruman now fortifies Isengard, most likely with men of Dunlending origin. He also sets out spies to keep an eye on Gandalf, whom he fears. His spies are placed all around the Shire and he is still searching for the One Ring in the Anduin River. In the 3000 year of the Third Age, Saruman dares to look into the Palantir of Orthanc. This was a large misstep, and Sauron was able to influence Saruman through his will. Saruman was dominated. He no longer opposed Sauron, and he desired his victory. Yet, Saruman still wanted to acquire the One Ring for himself. He was now Saruman of many colors, and he faked his alliance with Sauron while searching for the One Ring. Saruman believed Sauron's victory to be the future. If Saruman did not find the One Ring, at least he would still be an ally of the victorious Mordor. Saruman now started breeding men with orcs to create powerful half orcs who became his servants. He also bred Urukai and wolves and his army lived within the Ring of Isengard, which he had now turned into a fortress prepared for war. In the 3018th year of the Third Age, Saruman meets with Radagast the Brown, telling him to inform Gandalf that he can give counsel to Gandalf if need be. Radagast then travels and finds Gandalf, and he tells him that Saruman is willing to help him. Gandalf is also informed that the Nazgul is seen in the wild and is headed for the Shire. This worries Gandalf, and is convinced to visit Saruman. Gandalf speculates if Saruman may perhaps have found a weapon to fight off the ring wraiths. With this in mind, Gandalf travels to Isengard and meets with Saruman. Gandalf approaches Saruman, and Saruman introduces his new identity, Saruman the Ringforger. Saruman of many colors. Saruman's clothes were no longer white and it shifted between different hues. This is essentially Saruman's way of showing that he has forsaken the mission he was tasked by the Valar. Saruman now allows Gandalf to join him on his new path. He presents his idea to Gandalf to join with the new power of Middle Earth and in time to overthrow Sauron and together become the rulers of Middle-earth. Saruman now reveals his passion to obtain the One Ring, and Gandalf realizes what madness that has been inflicted on Saruman. Gandalf refuses to reveal any information about the One Ring, and Saruman holds Gandalf as a prisoner atop of Orthanc. Gandalf is later rescued by Gvaihir Vinlord, and Saruman realizes that his plans are now revealed to the free peoples of Middle-earth. After Gandalf's escape, Saruman's misfortune continues when the ring wraiths arrive at the gate of Isengard and ask where the One Ring is. Saruman now realizes that Sauron has perceived his betrayal. However, Saruman uses his voice which is one of the most dangerous weapons in Middle-earth. His voice is a law to anyone except the very wisest. The ring raids are sent to pursue Gandalf, as Saruman claims that Gandalf knows where the One Ring is. Saruman understands his peril now. He is uncloaked of his betrayal to both Sauron and the Free Peoples. He believes he only has two options now, to obtain the One Ring or to be utterly destroyed. Saruman decides to keep hunting for the One Ring to bring order to Middle-earth. The War of the Ring is in motion. Saruman attacks the Forge of Isen successfully, and he kills Prince Theodred. Now he only needs to get control of the king, and Rohan will belong to his Urukai. He empties Isengard, intending to devastate Rohan. They head towards the Helm's Deep, where the Rohiric army is stationed, and they have the odds. However, with the aid of Gandalf the White, 
Erkenbrand, and the Huons of Fangorn, the Free Peoples claim victory against all odds. At the same time, Isengard is overtaken by the Ents of Fangorn. Saruman's plans are now destroyed, and he hides in his tower. He later gets a visit from Gandalf, who gives him a last chance. Saruman refuses to aid the Free Peoples, and is a lost cause. And yet, Saruman's troublesome actions is not finished. He later leaves Isengard, using his cunning voice to let Treebeard grant him passage. Saruman and Grima Wormtongue wanders in the wild, and later head for the Shire whom Saruman has taken control over. He controls some hundred half-orcs who claim taxes from the hobbits. They have also completely ruined parts of the Shire and built hideous buildings. The poor hobbits is unable to resist this dictatorship, but rebels under the command of Frodo, Sam, Merry and Pippin when they return from the east. The Battle of the Bywater commences, a battle which ends the War of the Ring. The half orcs are captured and killed, and hobbit lives are also claimed. It's a tragic ending, yet more evil is to happen. The four famed hobbits pay Saruman a visit accompanied by the hobbit army. Saruman has now faced utter defeat, and not much is left of his pride. Frodo commands Saruman to leave the Shire, and Saruman does so, but not before he has stabbed Frodo with a knife. The knife is broken in two as it is not able to pierce the Mithril West. Frodo does not repay this deed, and he lets Saruman go. Grima Wormtung is allowed to stay in the Shire for a while, until he has regathered his strength. However, Saruman's voice has complete control over Grima. Eventually, Saruman reveals that Grima has killed a hobbit, and Grima is enraged and cuts Saruman's throat. Grima is then killed by the hobbit arrows. Grey mist arises from the dead Maya, and that is the tragic fate of Saruman of many colors. Yet, one question remains unanswered. Why did Saruman turn evil when he was among the wisest in Middle-earth? Shouldn't he know better? Saruman was not entirely evil per se, he was impatient, and the One Ring could satisfy this impatience. Saruman believed he would be able to use the One Ring to defeat Sauron, and this could have happened had Saruman spent enough time with the Ring to learn it fully. However, the outcome would have been disastrous. In place of Sauron, you would have had Saruman, the new Dark Lord of Middle-earth. He would have wished to do good, but would have ended up becoming the same person that Sauron was. The Isari suffered the same pains and sufferings as the beings they inhabited, and thus they were also at risk to sin and fall, as Tolkien says. Saruman fell, and he believed that he could cause order with the One Ring. His evil came from good intentions and his vast studies of Sauron's devices. In the end, he became a lesser copy of Sauron and was completely ripped off all pride and knowledge. He forged his own ring, wanted to cause order and turn from the path of wisdom. Conquered by pride and hatred, Saruman could represent Satan. This was my story of Saruman the White, one of the most interesting characters in Middle-earth in my opinion. A more complex character than perceived by the masses. What are your thoughts of Saruman the White? Do you have any objections, critique or feedback to this character story? Let me hear it and remember to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoyed this character story. There is more coming and I also cover all the news about the upcoming Middle Earth series. Thank you all for watching, I highly appreciate it. Here are some other interesting videos I would encourage you to check out.